Hello and welcome back. For this video, we'll discuss open sentences in two variables. Here you can see a list of vocabulary. Go ahead and pause the video if you'd like to and write these down, or you can print out the PDF that is accompanying it. A couple of things is the open sentence is two variables. So you can see we have an equation and we have an inequality that's an open sentence. The solution is a variable pair, usually using the letters x and y. So if we have x is equal to 3 and y equals to 6, that would cause this statement or that sentence to be true. So that's only one solution. Ordered pair is the name given to that x and y combination, x, y. So the above solution where we had x is 3 and y is 6, the solution could be listed or stated as 3 comma 6 or 3, 6 as the ordered pair. A solution set is the set of all ordered pairs, not just one. So up here we had uh, 3, 6 for that solution, but that was just one. So the solution set would consider all the ordered pairs that makes the statement true. When we say solve, we're talking about finding the solution set, and quite often what we're going to find out real soon is that ends up being a graph or a line. The domain is the name given for all the x values. You can also call it the input or the independent variable. And the range is the name given to the y values. You can also call that the output or dependent variables. Example one, we want to solve the equation 9x plus 2y equals 15 if the domain of x is equal to these numbers. So we're going to take these numbers here and put them in place of x. So what I'm going to do first is take this equation and rewrite it so that y is by itself. So I'm going to solve it for y. So 2y is equal to 15 minus 9x. So all I did was move my 9x over to this side. Then I'm going to divide by 2. So y is going to equal to 15 minus 9x. And the whole thing is going to be divided by 2. So all I got to do now is take each of these numbers up here, let's say the negative 1, and substitute it in place of x. So the first one will give us 15 minus 9 times negative 1 over 2. And this is going to give us a positive 9 plus 15 is 24. And 24 divided by 2 gives us an answer of 12. So I have one solution of negative 1 comma 12. We're going to do it again with the 0. 9 times 0, negative 9 times 0 is giving me a 0. 15 plus 0 is 15 over 2. So I'm going to just leave it as the improper fraction of 15 over 2. Do it again with a 1. And that's going to give me a negative 9. So 15 minus 9 is going to give me a 6. And 6 over 2 is going to give me an output of 3. We'll do it again with a 2. So if, well, this right here is going to give me minus 18. So 15 minus 18 is a negative 3 over 2. And I'm going to leave that as an improper fraction of negative 3 halves. And this right here is going to give me a negative 27. 15 minus 27 is negative 12. And negative 12 divided by 2 is going to give me a negative 6. So another solution is 3, negative 6. So we actually have five solutions given the input or domain value of x. Example 2, a customer asks a bank teller for $390 in traveler's checks. Some are worth $50 and some are worth $20. We want to find all the possible uh, number of each type of check that the customer could receive. We've got two types of checks, so we're going to let F stand for the number of $50 checks and T stand for the number of $20 checks. Well, we have a total up here of 390, so a total of 390 is going to equal something plus something else. That's how you get totals. Well, in place of each of these, we have the value of the $50 checks. And over here, we would have the value of the $20 checks. The only problem is we don't know how many of each. So we do know that F is the number of $50 checks. So if I take a 50 and I times it by F, that will give me the value of the $50 checks. Plus, I take 20, which is the value of one check, $20 check, and times it by T. That will give me the value of the $20 checks. And I know that the whole thing has to add up to $390. First thing I'm going to do is simplify this. You'll notice that they're all divisible by 10. So we're going to reduce this into a simpler problem of 5F plus 2T is equal to 39. And I'm going to solve this for T, which means I'm going to get, every, get rid of everything except for T on the left-hand side. So 2T is going to equal... 39 minus 5f minus 5f from both sides. Then I'm going to divide by 2 on each side. So t is going to end up equaling 39 minus 5f all over 2. All I got to do now is create a table of values. 
where I input a $50 number and I output a $20 number. And I'm gonna start with one. And if I input a one right here in place of F, that's five times one, which is five. 39 minus five is 34, and 34 divided by two outputs 17. So I can input one $50 bill, one $50 check, and I will get 17 $20 checks back. Now you'll notice that I'm dividing by two. And so the inputs that I wanna use for F should be every other number because I want the division to become even. So if I have a one right here, my next number up should, should be two higher, which should be a three. So now I'm gonna input a three there, and three times five is gonna give me 15, and 39 minus 15 is gonna give me 24, and 24 divided by two is gonna give me 12. So I can have three $50 checks, or 12 $20 checks. And I'm gonna add, I added two here, I'm gonna add two again, just to keep it even amounts, because I can't have partial checks, that will give me an input of five. So now I'm gonna input five here. Five times five is 25. When I subtract it from 39, I get 14. 14 divided by two gives me seven. So five $50 checks, seven 20s. And I'm gonna try seven, go up seven, and put a seven here. Seven times five is 35. When I subtract it from 39, I get four. Four divided by two leaves me with two $20 checks and seven 50s. Now, if I were to put a nine in there, because that would be the next one up, nine times five, if I put a nine right here, Nine times five will give me 45. When I subtract it from 39, I end up with a negative. So this is as far as I can go. So my possible check values are listed all in the table. Example three, find all positive two digit odd numbers. You gotta be careful here. They're telling you it is an odd number with the property. When the digits are interchanged, the result exceeds the original number by more than 36. Keep in mind that uh, more than means to add. So it has the original number has to be increased by 36. Now we're gonna let U stand for the, U, for the units digit and T stand for the tens digit. Let's remember back to elementary school. If we have the number 36, this is the tens digit and this is the units or sometimes called the ones digit. And to get 36, we need three groups of 10 and we will add to it six groups of one. Well, since we have a times one here, we don't really need the one, but over here we have a 10, so we do need the 10. And the only thing we don't know is the three and the six uh, are what those actual values are gonna be. So we're gonna use the letter U for the tens or the units digit and the letter T for the tens digit. So the original number has tens digit times 10, whatever that value is, plus the units digit times one, which I don't need to put a times one in there, and that will make the original, and the new number is gonna be 36 bigger than that. It's actually gonna be more than 36 bigger than that. So I've got the original on this side, and I'm gonna put the new one on this side, because the new one is gonna exceed the original, which means the new one is gonna be greater than, not equal to, but greater than the original, but that only occurs when I interchange the digits. That means if I had a 36, my new number would be 63. So I'm interchanging the digits. So over on this side, instead of taking 10 and multiplying it by my tens digit, I'm gonna multiply it by my units digit, and I'm simply gonna add to it the tens digit times one. So I'm interchanging those numbers. That's how I get that effect. What I'm gonna do is put U by itself on this side because I'm gonna input my tens and output my units. So I'm going to bring my units digit to this side by minusing one unit. And I'm gonna bring my tens digits to this side by minusing one tens. That will cross out the units on this side, the tens on this side, leaving nine units greater than nine tens plus 36. And of course, use not by itself yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide everything by nine to simplify that, so divide by nine. And I end up with the number of units digits needs to be greater than the tens digits, however many I have, plus four. Since it's set up this way, I'm gonna create a table of values. I'm gonna put my tens here and my unit possibilities on this side. So I'm gonna input tens and I'm gonna output units. 
So I'm going to start with an input of 1 because we can't have a 0 for the tens digit because that would make it not a two-digit number anymore. So I'm going to start with a 1. So if I input a 1 right here, input a 1, I get the number of units must be bigger than 1 plus 4, which is 5. So there's a bunch of numbers that are bigger than 5. The numbers that are bigger than 5 are 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now I can't go to 10 because the, the ones place or the units digit can only have or one place value. I can't put two numbers there, so I'm limited to 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now which of these numbers do I actually use? Remember, we're talking about an odd number, and it's the units digit that affects whether the number's even or odd. So I'm outputting units, because that's what I calculated. These are all the possible values for you, because they have to be bigger than 5, according to this first calculation. So the only two possibilities are a 7 and a 9. So my first two numbers could be 17 and 19. 1, 7, and 1, 9. Okay, let's go ahead and put a 2 in there. If I input a 2, 2 plus 4 is 6, and the only numbers that are bigger than 6 that are also odd are 7 and 9 again. 7 and 9. Put a 3 in there. 3 plus 4 is 7. So put a 3, scratch this out, put a 3 in there, 7. So I'm looking for numbers that are bigger than 7. Well, the only digit that matches that is a 9. And if I put a 4 in there, so scratch this out, put a 4 in there, I get a 4 plus 4, which is 8. So I'm looking for a number that's bigger than 8, but also odd, which is also a 9. And I cannot put a 5 in here. So I can't put a 5, and we'll show you why, because if we put a 5 right here, we get 5 plus 4, which of course is equal to 9. And I'm looking for all the u's that are greater than 9. Well, that would be creating a number like 10, 11, 12, which is a two-digit number, and our unit's value can't have two digits. So we have to stop at 4. So our possibilities are 17, which is 1, 7, 19, 1, 9, and 1, 9. 27 and 29, 39 and 49. So those are all the numbers that when you reverse, the new number will be in excess of 36 more than the original. Example four, find the value of k so that the ordered pair satisfies the solution. So if you look at our equation here, we have a k times the y. What we're saying here is what value of k, so what does k have to equal, so that this point is an actual solution of the equation. Well, we can figure that out really easy just by substituting the values in for x and y and working for k. Remember, this is the x value and this is the y value. So we're going to substitute in place of x a 2 minus k and in times and in place of y we're going to substitute a negative 1 and that's going to equal 4. And then we're going to simplify. So 3 times 2 is 6. Negative k times 1 is positive k is equal to 4. And then to solve for k, we're going to subtract 6 from both sides, and k will end up having to equal negative 2. So the value that k has to be so that the solution can be 2, negative 1 is k has to equal negative 2. So the original problem would have looked like this, 3x minus, and then k would be negative 2y plus 4, and of course minus negative 2, we could have actually wrote the problem as 3x plus 2y equals 4. So this is the equation that allows 2, negative 1 to be a solution, but only after you calculated the k value of negative 2.